everyone, it's Alice here from Top Mark Science and today we're going to be looking at eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Throughout this video we will be exploring the following AQA specification points. Examples of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, the structure of eukaryotes and prokaryotes, and comparing and contrasting the structure of these cells. Let's get started. As we saw in our last video, there are many things around us that are living. From domesticated animals to wild animals, bees to fish, insects to mammals, and you. You are a living body that has taken millions of years of evolution that has led to a variety of systems that work together to help you function. Your skeletal system, your nervous system, and your circulatory system. Systems that contain organs that work together to help you function, like your heart. Made of muscle tissue, which is made of the basic unit of all forms of life. Cells. Living organisms that you see on a daily basis will be complex forms of life. Somewhere amongst them will be simple forms. Pause the video here and see if you can spot the simplest life form on the screen. Yes! These little things here. Bacteria. Bacteria are forms of life and they come in a whole variety of types. They are unicellular organisms, meaning they are a single cell. Unlike these life forms, which are way more complex, and yes, made up of cells, but millions of them. Complex life such as these are multicellular organisms. With all three examples being made of cells then, Let's look at how they compare to each other. Pause the video here and play another round of spot the same and difference between the cells. Try and find as many as you can and replay the video when you're out of ideas. Let's see what you're able to find then. Tick off any that you found that were correct as we go. So firstly, they all have a cytoplasm the jelly-like fluid where many chemical reactions of the cell take place, shown by the pale background. They all have ribosomes for protein synthesis, shown by these small spots. Eukaryotic ribosomes are larger than prokaryotic though. They all have a cell membrane to control the entry and exit of substances into and out of the cell, shown by this solid black line and they all have genetic material that holds the code to build proteins later on. However, you might notice that this genetic material is held within a nucleus for the animal and plant cells, but not for the bacteria. It kind of just floats in the cytoplasm as a loop of DNA. This allows us to create two categories of cells then, where we can place these cells on the left as one group, these are the eukaryotic cells, and the other as a separate group called prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells consist of animal and plant cells. Prokaryotic cells include bacteria, which are significantly smaller by about 10 times than eukaryotic cells. But for the sake of making things easier to see, we'll scale it up so we can make some further comparisons between the two. So overall, eukaryotic cells differ from prokaryotic cells for containing what we call membrane-bound organelles. This basically means that the structures inside the cell themselves, such as mitochondria and chloroplasts, have their own membrane, in addition to the membrane around the cell. Like we just mentioned, eukaryotic cells' most obvious difference is the presence of a nucleus which holds the genetic information. Unlike prokaryotes, whose DNA is a loop floating in the cytoplasm, prokaryotes also may have, but not always, have the presence of plasmids, loops of DNA that code for antibiotic resistance. Now you might look at these diagrams and think, well, yes, there are all of these differences between the two categories. But I can see that plant cells and bacteria both have a cell wall. They do, but they are made of different substances. Where we saw in our previous video that a plant cell wall is made of cellulose, bacterial walls are made of murine. 
Bacteria also have this additional layer of protection from physical and chemical threats. This protection is in the form of a slime capsule and they also have these flagella to assist with movement. Based on what we've just discussed then, pause the video here to copy and label the diagram of the prokaryotic cell shown so you have a copy for your revision notes. The labels are listed down on the right hand side and if you are unable to draw the diagram, just match the letters to the label. If you finish, try the challenge. Okay, so let's go through the answers, starting with A and working our way around. Annotate your work as we go. A should look familiar as we have come across this previously with plant cells. This is the cell wall. B is the loop of DNA. C is the ribosomes. D, the slime capsule. E, the flagella. F, the plasmids. G is the cytoplasm and H is the cell membrane. The challenge was to name a structure found in a prokaryotic cell but not in a eukaryotic cell and describe its function. In other words, what structure do we find in bacterial cells that we do not find in animal or plant cells and what does that structure do? So we have some options as there are three correct answers. Flagella for movement, plasmids for antibiotic resistance, and the slime capsule for protection. Well done if you got any one of these correct. Pause the video here and now use your diagram and what we've gone through so far to copy and complete the table to highlight key differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. Feel free to replay any portion of the video to refresh your memory. And if you finish, try the challenge. Let's see how you got on. Get ready to mark your work. So the top row has asked for cell examples. Eukaryotic cells are animal and plant. Prokaryotic is bacteria. Eukaryotic organisms are multicellular and prokaryotes are unicellular. Eukaryotic DNA is in the nucleus. Prokaryotic DNA is in the cytoplasm as a free loop. Eukaryotic cells are larger than prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells do not have a slime capsule, prokaryotes do. Eukaryotic ribosomes for protein synthesis are larger than prokaryotic cell ribosomes. Eukaryotic cells do not have a flagella, prokaryotic cells do. No and yes for plasmids, yes for both cell membranes. And eukaryotic cell walls, aka plant cell walls, are made of cellulose, whereas prokaryotic cell walls are made of murine. The challenge to think about which cell may have evolved first may have taken a bit of thought, but by applying some knowledge we can link ideas. Eukaryotic cells are larger, and more complex with more stuff in them. This would mean it would probably take them longer to evolve. So scientists theorise that prokaryotic cells evolve first due to their simplicity and lack of membrane bound organelles like chloroplasts, mitochondria and a nucleus. Now for something with a little less words but still practising the skill of comparison between cells. Copy and complete the Venn diagram, which is a set of circles, and help us display what features might be in common between the cells. There is no need to write the full words, just write the numbers as listed in the box. An example has been started for you, which shows a number one in the segment that overlaps animal and plant cells. This means animal and plant cells are both eukaryotes, as number one is eukaryote on the list. Where do you think number two, prokaryote, would go then? It would go in this segment specific to bacteria. Pause the video here and try numbers three to ten by yourself. And if you finish, try the challenge. Let's go through the rest of the ideas together then. Tick your correct answers as we go and annotate or add anything you missed for future use. Three, nucleus is only in animal and plant cells here. 4 is a cell wall, which animal cells do not have, but plant and bacteria do. 
So it will go in this plant bacteria overlapping section. Five plasmids only found in bacteria. Six cell membrane relevant to all of them. So number six can go in the middle. Seven chloroplasts only in plant cells. Eight flagella only in bacteria. Nine cytoplasm is found in all three. So we can place this in the middle. And finally, number 10, mitochondria is a eukaryotic cell feature, so we can pop this in the top middle section. The challenge was to describe the distribution of structures between the three cells. In other words, if someone couldn't see this Venn diagram, how would you describe where each of the organelles go if they were to try and draw it themselves based on your description? We could say something along the lines of, Animal and plant cell are both eukaryotes, so number one, so they share a nucleus, number three, and mitochondria, number ten. Bacteria is a prokaryote, number two, so is the only one to have plasmids, number five, and flagella, number eight. Plants are the only one to have chloroplasts, number seven. Plants and bacteria share a wall. Number four, all three types of cell have cell membranes, that's number six, and cytoplasms, number nine. Animal cells do not have anything only found in them, and animal cells do not share anything exclusively with bacteria. Phew, well done for getting this far, lots of new things have been covered, so let's review with a quick fire fun quiz, true or false style. True or false? Eukaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. False, they do have a nucleus. Bacteria are an example of prokaryotic cells. True. Eukaryotic cells have membrane bound organelles. Yes, they do. Prokaryotic cells' genetic material is not enclosed in a nucleus. True. Remember, it's just a loop of DNA that floats in the cytoplasm. Flagella are a structure found in eukaryotic cells that helps them move. False. They help prokaryotic cells move. And finally, Prokaryotes may have circular rings of DNA called plasmids. Bonus points if you can say what the job of a plasmid is. True, they aid with antibiotic resistance. Well done everyone. Pause the video here to rate your progress on the following objectives to find areas of strengths and development. It will be useful for future revision. Thank you so much for watching this video guys. If you liked it and would like to see more from Top Mark Science, you can like this video, subscribe to this channel, and you can now find us on Facebook for more teaching and study tips and general science updates. The link will be below in the description. That's all for now. Thanks for coming and I'll see you next time.